You want me to look in the camera? We asked Dr. Anna Limke to answer common questions she hears about alcohol use. How do you detox from alcohol? Great question. One thing you should be very, very aware of is that alcohol withdrawal can be life-threatening. So if you are somebody who has been drinking in very large amounts for a sustained period of time, there's a chance that if you stop drinking, you could have seizures, you could enter a delirium state called delirium tremens, and without medical help, you could die. So really make sure that you get some kind of medical advice or medical evaluation um, if you think you fall into that category. In general, acute alcohol withdrawal lasts about three to 10 days. And again, it's that three to, let's say, seven day window where people are at very high risk for alcohol withdrawal seizures or what we call delirium tremens. That's associated with confusion, with feeling like bugs are crawling over you, with feeling like people are trying to get you. So signs and symptoms of psychosis. By about day 10, the acute alcohol withdrawal syndrome has subsided, but there is something called the protracted abstinence syndrome. And this is this idea that the craving and the kind of dopamine deficit state that occurs with addiction can last much, much longer on the order of months and in some cases even years before the brain fully heals and normalizes. In fact, we have good data showing that it takes, on average, about 18 months after stopping drinking for sleep to totally normalize. So when my patients who are trying to get in recovery from alcohol addiction come in and say, a month or two down the road, I still am not sleeping very well, I say to them, you know, hang in there. Really, it's going to get better. That tincture of time alone will heal your brain. How do you treat withdrawal from alcohol? So first thing to recognize is that treating withdrawal from alcohol is not the same as treating the disease of alcoholism itself. Those are sort of like different parts of the disease process. First, we have to help people stop drinking and help treat their withdrawal. But it's really only once we've gotten them out of acute withdrawal that the treating the disease of addiction, which is a chronic relapsing and remitting disease actually begins. So I just wanted to kind of frame it that way. Now, if we think about how to treat alcohol withdrawal, the universal symptoms of withdrawal from any addictive substance are anxiety, irritability, insomnia, depression, and intrusive thoughts of wanting to use. So for very mild cases of alcoholism, most people um, don't need a medical intervention for that alcohol withdrawal portion. They just need enough emotional and psychological support to be able to get through that acute withdrawal phase to get them to the time where we actually begin treatment for the disease of addiction itself. But there are quite a few people who will need medication to help support them through alcohol withdrawal. And those medications often are medications that help prevent the tremor, the seizure, and the delirium tremens, which can be life-threatening. And they include benzodiazepines, but also anti-seizure medication. How do you treat alcoholism? Well, alcohol addiction or alcoholism, or what we usually call alcohol use disorder, is a biopsychosocial disease. That means its causes are biological, psychological, and social or environmental. Therefore, the treatment also needs to be a biopsychosocial treatment. So for example, a biological treatment for alcohol use disorder might be to prescribe a medication. And we have different types of medications that are FDA approved for the treatment of alcohol use disorder. One example is a medication called naltrexone, which blocks the opioid receptors in our brains. You might ask yourself, why on earth would an opioid receptor blocker help somebody stop drinking alcohol? And it's a great question. And the reason is because alcohol stimulates our own endogenous or internal opioid system. 
And it's the reinforcement or the good feelings that we get from triggering our own opioid system that leads to the release of dopamine in the reward pathway that leads us down the road of continued compulsive consumption despite harm to self and or others. So by prescribing an opioid receptor blocker like naltrexone, we essentially abort or truncate stimulating that endogenous opioid system so that patients have less craving to use alcohol. And if they do drink alcohol while they're taking naltrexone, it's less reinforcing for them. There is lots of data showing that individual and group psychotherapy can be very effective for the treatment of addiction. And then, of course, we have this social or contextual piece. One of the biggest risk factors for addiction is simple access to that drug. So what we need to do in order to help people stay in recovery is help them change their immediate environment. And that includes, for example, things like who they hang out with, right? Um, if people are hanging out with other people who are drinking heavily, it's very hard for them to stop themselves. And one of the things that can really help is participation in a sober mutual help group. So going and talking to other people who are struggling with a similar problem, who are working on efforts to solve that problem together. And of course, the classic example is Alcoholics Anonymous. And we have lots of good data showing that people who actively participate in mutual help groups like Alcoholics Anonymous actually stay sober longer. If you or someone you love is struggling with an alcohol use disorder, please talk to your healthcare professional. It's never too late to get treatment for addiction. Thank you.